Do not forget, you can support the channel with a like and you can also subscribe to be aware of the latest published videos. Thank you. We hope that here you can find the latest news, ideas and discoveries from the scientific world. Sir Nunnos, the enigmatic antlered god of the ancient Celts. The Celts can rightfully be placed amongst the world's most important ancient cultures and civilizations. Their far-reaching ancient origins are the irreplaceable part of every historical lesson, and their role in history was crucial in the development of the world as we know it today. Yet even so, many aspects of the Celtic culture and belief are a bit of an enigma, even today. Because they didn't leave any considerable written records, the Celts are largely mysterious, and most of what we know of their early history comes from Roman or Greek historians. We do know, however, that Cernanos was one of their foremost deities. A mystical antlered god, he was revered by the Celts across Europe. Who is Cernanos, the antlered god of the Celts? With the relatively recent discoveries of ancient Celtic core sites of Latine and Hallstatt in the mid-1800 seconds, the world and the culture of these ancient Europeans came to the closer view of the general public and historians as well. Suddenly, there was so much more to learn about the Celts, about their art, their lifestyle, and their beliefs. Before the 1800 seconds, the pantheon of the ancient Celts was largely enigmatic, but with new archaeological material, type sites, and a closer glimpse into their religious rituals, we were finally able to paint a more detailed picture of the ancient gods of the Celtic peoples. Arguably the best known deity in their pantheon is Cernanos, the sylvan antlered god that likely has origins that far predate the emergence of the Celts. Sometimes also known as Carnonos, his name has firm Proto-Indo-European origins. It stems from the Pi word Krno and is thus cognate to Germanic Hernes and Latin Cornu, all meaning horn. In the Celtic Gaulish language, this word was Carnon, and the connection with the name of Cernanos is clear, it reflects the deity's stag antlers, growing from his head. Thus, Cernanos literally means the horned one. This can also be deduced from the surviving imagery related to the god. In almost every surviving depiction, Cernanos is presented as a seated human figure, with majestic stag antlers on his head, a luxurious and symbolic torque necklace around his neck or in his hand, and symbolic animals all around him. There are, however, some key indicators that suggest that Cernanos is much older than the emergence of the Celtic culture. Is this god a vestige of a far older civilization? One of the foremost hindrances in the process of learning more about Cernanos is the lack of any surviving Celtic or Gaulish literature, inscriptions, and any other written evidence related to this deity. Without such material, we are left completely clueless as to what exact role Cernanos had for the Celts. Was he the chief divinity of a larger pantheon? What epithets did he have, and what mythic tales were associated with him? These are the things that are hard to even outline properly. But we can safely say that this was a very important god, one that is present across Europe with all the Celtic peoples. Over time, scholars offered differing interpretations of Cernanos and his role for the Celts. Some consider him the god of fertility, animals, and nature, while others mention him as a deity of travel or commerce. Whatever his true role may be, it is certain that he has something to do with nature and things primeval. His antlers suggest fertility, forests, strength. The torques suggest ruling, power, influence. The seated pose suggests wisdom, patience, reverence. The animals suggest shapeshifting, nature, and primal strength. One of the best known depictions of Cernanos, and one that serves as the parallel to all other known images of this god, is the famed Gundestrup cauldron. This is a luxurious and extravagantly decorated silver vessel, discovered in 1891 in Denmark within a peat bog. The cauldron is made from solid silver and portrays Cernanos in stunning detail, amongst other scenes and figures. The antler deity is seated in the so-called Buddha pose, holds a torque in his hand, a snake in the other, and is surrounded by a variety of animals. Interestingly, the cauldron is not of Celtic manufacture. Historians largely agree that the cauldron was made by several Thracian silversmiths, as commissioned by the Celtic tribe of Scordisci. The cauldron, a highly valuable item, was later plundered by the Germanic Cimbri and eventually deposited in Jutland Peninsula in Denmark. Is Cernanos the mythic master of animals? The depiction of the god on Gundestrup cauldron is strangely akin to the iconic master of animals figure, which is found on many carvings and reliefs from ancient times. Curiously enough, the master of animals predates Cernanos by thousands of years. This is a figure found in the world's oldest civilizations, from Ur, Babylon, and the Indus Valley. As the name suggests, this figure is also surrounded by animals, and often grasps a snake in his hand, a gesture that means domination over nature, the elements, and the animal world. Could this link suggest that Cernanos survived the long centuries and persevered amongst the Celts as a god from far older times? 
We may never know for certain, but the imagery certainly suggests so. Either way, Cernunnos, in all his mystery, was most commonly found amongst the Gaulish tribes of modern-day France, Luxembourg, Belgium, and Germany. The Romans left many mentions of this god, and as the Celts became the Gallo-Romans, Cernunnos became bundled with the likes of Jupiter, Mars, and Janus. Many surviving Gaulish inscriptions and carvings either depict or mention Cernunnos, a simple male figure made distinct by his antlers. Similarly, the depictions of an antlered god can be found elsewhere in the Celtic world. Within Britain, several reliefs of antlered figures are known in archaeology, but none of them bear the name Cernunnos, making positive identification impossible. One depiction was found in Sirencester and another in Petersfield, Hampshire. It is possible that the Celts of the British Isles also revered the antlered god Cernunnos, and his name could have survived in the form of Hearn the Hunter, an enigmatic legendary figure with stag antlers and various other mythic attributes. Alas, due to the turbulent history of the British Isles and the many cultures that dwelt there, any belief in Cernunnos was long ago forgotten forever. A primal god rooted in Europe's history, Cernunnos remains one of the most important ancient deities in European history. It is subject to constant research even now, and any new archaeological excavation in Celtic lands is a possibility to learn more about him. Other than physical depictions of this deity, we don't have much to go on. We can propose theories, but we'll never know for certain what his exact role was. Either way, he was an important figure for the Celts, one of Europe's foremost ancient ethno-linguistic groups. And his unique appearance certainly suggests that he has very old roots, perhaps even predating the Indo-Europeans. And such theories open a whole new world of possibilities.